Between 1992 and 1993, three different Darkwing Duck games were released based on the Disney cartoon series. They were released for the NES, Game Boy, and TurboGrafx-16. The two Nintendo games were developed by Capcom, while the TurboGrafx version was developed by Turbo Technologies. Darkwing Duck was a Disney series that was part of the Disney Afternoon. The show aired new episodes from 1991 through 1992. It's a spin-off of DuckTales, and it's pretty much a combination of DuckTales and Batman. Darkwing Duck for the NES was released in June of 1992, putting its release date late in the NES's life cycle. The game was developed by Capcom and it shows. The game has many similarities to the 8-bit Mega Man games. And this is more than a coincidence because the game actually runs on the Mega Man 5 engine. The game is very much like Mega Man in that you can choose the levels you want to play, however the game is divided into two sets of three and one final level, putting the game at seven levels total. Your standard attack in this game is with your gas gun and there's also special shots. You're only able to hold one of these special shots at a time and there are three different types. One shoots balls of gas that fall to the ground as soon as you shoot it and it splits into two bullets that go in opposite directions, left and right when it hits the ground. Another special gas power-up shoots plunger arrows that you're able to jump off of once they hit the wall. And lastly, there's an electricity power-up that shoots two bullets in diagonal directions from you. The electricity power-up is pretty much worthless though, because it's extremely hard to hit anything with it. The game handles a lot like Mega Man, but adds two major additions. You're able to cling to the bottom of certain objects and ledges, and you're also able to duck. The cling ability feels good usually, but there's one issue. When jumping down from a ledge, you hit down and A, and this will put you into the cling position. However, if you want to drop from the cling, you can't hit down and A again, you simply just have to hit down. When having to do this quickly, it can get a little bit annoying. The game has a really high difficulty level because it only takes four hits to die. This is quite a bit less lenient than Mega Man because you have so much less health. Also adding to the difficulty, many enemies take way too many hits to kill. This can be extremely annoying because it feels like you're just dumping shots into enemies with no progress a lot of times. Graphically, this game looks pretty good. Most of the environments look like a late Mega Man game and all the sprites are about what you'd expect from Capcom in this era. This game's music is also pretty good. It's lively and it sounds good. It's pretty much what you'd expect from a Capcom game for the NES. Darkwing Duck on the NES is currently going for a little over $17 according to PriceCharting.com. Since this game was released pretty late in the NES's life cycle, this price is actually pretty reasonable and, for the gameplay, it's actually worth it. Overall, Darkwing Duck is a really great modification on the Mega Man formula and offers enough changes to make it different and totally worth playing. As with many of the other Disney Capcom games, this one's totally worth playing. The Game Boy version of Darkwing Duck is almost a direct port of the NES version, just scaled down a bit to work on the Game Boy. This game was ported to the Game Boy by Sunsoft. The main differences between the Game Boy version is that the levels are slightly shorter and smaller vertically. This vertical reduction can be seen most easily on the Quacker Jack boss fight. There are three different levels of ground on the NES version, while on the Game Boy version there's only two. The Game Boy version also experiences slowdown if there's too many sprites on the screen, whereas the NES version doesn't. The slowdown actually can be helpful though, because if you're in a hectic situation and if you start mashing your attack, it'll slow the game down and help you avoid attacks. According to PriceCharting.com, the Game Boy version of Darkwing Duck is going for $9. This seems somewhat expensive for a Game Boy game, but it's totally worth it. The Game Boy part of Darkwing Duck was one of my favorite Game Boy titles I owned growing up. It always amazed me at the time how much the portable version was faithful to the original. And this makes a notable milestone for the Game Boy console because it really raised the bar of quality in terms of Game Boy games at this time. Now, not all of the Darkwing Duck games were good. The TurboGrafx-16 version is really quite bad. The goal of this version of the game is to collect all the puzzle pieces on three levels to unlock the final fourth level. This game has an interesting stage select where you choose the level by looking at a photo through a magnifying glass. Problems immediately arise once you get into a level. The game is a side-scroller with some serious issues. First of all, trying to find all of something in a level of a game isn't fun, so the basic concept isn't great. Next, the game controls extremely poorly. Jumping feels different from level to level, and there's a strange glitch, where if you perform a jump running and then mash A, you'll continue to jump in that direction with the same momentum without even using the D-pad. It's also really hard to judge how far you're going to jump, because it feels really vague on the direction that you'll be going whenever you do jump. Your only attack is the gas gun, and it doesn't come with unlimited ammo. This is bad, because some bosses don't drop ammo, and if you get to them without ammo, you're simply out of luck. There's a really low difficulty to this game. Since you need to conserve your ammo for bosses, it's almost best just to take a hit and run through the level rather than killing enemies in your path. The controls are super stiff and dodging enemies isn't really an option either because of this. 
On the Tusker Nini level, it almost appears that the level was developed for a completely different game. You're walking up a hill in what appears to be San Francisco, and there's skateboarders coming down the hill at you. This level doesn't fit with the other levels at all, and it seems like it really was made for a different game. Many levels also feature power-ups that you can't reach, and there doesn't seem to be any feasible way to reach them. Once you find some puzzle pieces on each level, you have to put them together on a grid. This is pretty much trial and error until you can get the photo together. Once you complete the photo, you're able to get to the final level. This game only has four levels total, so it's extremely short. The game will also kill you if you don't move around enough without pausing the game for 30 seconds by dropping a safe on your head and taking one of your lives. Graphically, the sprites aren't bad looking, but they aren't really great either. The NES ones might be lower resolution, but they're so much more well animated and they show so much more expression. The environments are also extremely bland in the TurboGrafx-16 version with far too many grays and blacks. This game, for the most part, is extremely ugly. The graphics aren't the only thing that's bad in this game, the audio in this game is also horrendous. There's only one tune that'll play during all the levels, and it's just a bass line with some poorly synthesized organ that just drones on. It's extremely boring, and it just repeats forever. This game, without a doubt, has some of the worst music I've ever heard in any game. Darkwing Duck for the TurboGrafx-16 is worth $40 according to PriceDarting.com. This makes it the most expensive of the three Darkwing Duck games, and more than the other two put together. I assume this high price is due to the game's rarity, but it's totally not worth it. Darkwing Duck for the TurboGrafx-16 is a god-awful mess. It barely has any content, and the content that's there is just awful. This game has no redeemable qualities, the graphics are boring, the audio is bad, the game handles poorly, I wouldn't recommend trying this game at all. So that was all three versions of the Darkwing Duck games. The two games developed by Capcom were quite good, and the Game Boy port was one of the most faithful NES ports on the system. The TurboGrafx-16 version was terrible and should be avoided at all costs. If you have the ability to check out the Capcom versions, they're totally worth it despite their higher difficulty. 